Hey everyone, this is Kyle with uh, Simulation Lab here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, again with another 3D Studio Max and TIE Flow tutorial. Um, today we're going to be looking at a physics example uh, that I made just recently. So we'll go ahead and watch this video here. <laughs> All right, so basically, it's just a series of sticks that are standing up on end, and then there's a collider, something that collides with the sticks, and then starts a chain reaction, which causes them all to collapse on themselves. Um, we're going to be doing a similar, uh, we're making a similar scene to th as this, but we might do something a little bit more complex and maybe use a tie actor object with uh, that has a, a couple different um, components to it. Maybe we'll do like a stick that has a ball at the top of it or something. So, um, and then instead of a ring like this, like a donut shape, we, we might do something, something else. So, yeah, I don't know. We're just going to riff on this one and see, see what comes out. Um, so first thing we want to do is we'll go ahead and set up our units first. Make sure these are set to decimal inches. One unit equals one inch. That's good. And then we'll do something cool. Uh, maybe we'll have the text say chill. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you got a cool font. Um, ugh. Okay, now that we have this drawn, we're going to go ahead and create our stick. And for this, we'll just use a cylinder. Make it pretty small. Now, maybe we'll make it like 0.75 inch. And then... Height segments, we can get rid of all that, and then we can maybe make it a little taller, something like that. And then zero this out for right now. And then maybe for the sides, we'll just boost it up to 20 for now. And then, um, and then what I think we're gonna do is create like a ball at the top of that, just. So when the physics uh, simulation occurs, the sticks are going to collide into each other, and then there's going to be a ball at the top, and then we're just going to see what happens uh, once the the balls start hitting and it just kind of turns into chaos. So chill might not be so chill. You get it? Okay. All right. Um, so put that there. Zero this out. Sorry about this. We'll raise this up. And then maybe we'll like put it about there. Something like that. And then what we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to uh, maybe we'll set the little, yeah, this is fine. Go to compound objects and then we'll do uh, we're going to do pro boolean and then we can copy subtract and then start picking and then grab our sphere. So what that does, it basically just creates a little pocket for the sphere to sit in. And then per the simulation, we, what we might want to do is raise it up just a little bit, give it a little bit of a buffer between the between the, the cylinder um, and the sphere itself. So that'll be, I think that should be cool. Um, we could add a chamfer modifier and clean up the edges, but we could do that in the actual material itself. Um, if you use V-Ray or F-Storm, you could, um, in the material, you can add a little bit of a round roundness to the edges of things, so that we can use it use it to our advantage, so we don't have to simulate objects that have, you know, dozens or hundreds of of extra faces. So we'll keep our simulation really lean. Okay, so now that we have our stick and the sphere at the top of the stick. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and create the tie actor for this guy. And again, I'm not totally sure what's going to happen here, um, but we'll play around. Uh, under the helpers, tie flow, we've got a tie actor. Bring a tie actor out into the scene. And tie actors are really helpful for things that have multiple objects. You don't have to use a tie actor. Um, you could uh, attach these elements or just group them or something and then reference the group or the attached elements and then you can detach the elements within the within the birth, uh, the shape operator. Uh, we'll get to that, um, but for now we're going to use tie actor because it's real nice and easy. So we'll grab our two, um, we'll, we'll go ahead and pick, pick or both of our um, actors here, the sphere and the cylinder. So now that we have our tie actor set up, we don't really have to do anything else with this because we don't have any, we don't have any rig components in the tie actor uh, or in the stick and ball. So if we did, then we have to add those. But um, for now, we're, this this is good. Um, okay, so now we're ready to set up our tie flow, and this is actually really quick. Um, so hopefully, this will be a relatively quick tutorial. So go ahead and put this off to the side so we can still kind of see it. And then stretch out our canvas here. Okay, um, first thing we want to do is uh, going to birth zero. Um, I'll stick with 200 for now. I'm not sure what that's going to do, but uh, I'll do geometry. Display the geometry, and then um, let's go ahead and do position object. We'll pick our chill. So you can see the points are already showed up. We'll go ahead and reference our tie actor. And so we'll bring in a actor component. And then actor object. Choose our actor objects and you can see what's happening. And it looks like a uh, Uh, I see. Uh, okay. So what we have to do is, you know what we're going to do is we're going to zero all this stuff out. There you go. Oops. Okay. So we're going to zero this stuff out. We'll go ahead and hide this stuff because we don't need it for right now. So in our layers, we'll just go ahead and assign this to a new layer, actor, and we'll hide that. Easy. So now we have all of our actors basically spawned over the top of this text surface, right? And then what we want to do is we want to add a bunch more. So maybe we'll do like a thousand. Let's see how that looks. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's getting there. It's kind of cool. So um, we want to do is in our position object modifier, we'll keep faces. Uh, yeah, that's face. It's fine. Um, and then we'll do is do a separation. Oops. And then we will do like a one for our separation. And you can kind of like incrementally increase this. You see what happens when we incrementally increase that is they spread out. And that's what we want to have happen is that we want that spread to happen here. Because um, we don't want any of them touching each other because it's going to affect our simulation. So maybe I'll increase this like a little bit more. And we want we want it to be pretty dense, so I'll adjust the birth, maybe make this like 1500, 2000. How does that look? That looks pretty cool. You can tell it still says chill, which that's chill. <laughs> um, all right, so we okay, this is pretty successful so far. We have a shitload of actors spawned on the surface and they're not touching each other which is good and we can play with this later we can add more uh, actors if we want if you wanted to get a step further we could I think it'd be kind of cool to eh, we'll stick with this for now this, this should be pretty cool um, okay chill all right so what we want to do now 
is uh, set up our physics simulation. So we'll go ahead and do a physics shape. And for now, we'll just leave everything where it's at. Physics collision. And then what we're going to want to do, see if we start scrubbing through the timeline, you could tell it, it kind of moves a little bit, but it doesn't really do much, which is a good sign. That means that we can um, animate the collapse of these things. So what we want to do is maybe create a sphere. Bring up our layers. Put it back on the zero layer. Might be too big. I'll unhide this for right now. I just want to see a relative size of, of things. That's pretty cool. So what I want to do is basically I want to nudge this. And again, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I, I'm assuming that once the sphere hits, okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and animate this real quick. Maybe we'll set our keyframes to like 300. At 30 frames per second, that's 10 seconds of animation. So, um, Set up auto key, maybe we'll go to like 20 seconds, and then I'll have this thing I kind of bash into this guy here. Okay. So then under our physics collision, with our sphere selected, we'll go ahead and add selected. And then move this back over here for now so you can see what's happening. I'm not sure if this is going to process in real time, but we'll check it out. All right, cool. All right, so it's kind of working. It's getting messy. Cool. So we don't need the sphere visible. So what we'll do is object properties. We'll just uncheck render, renderable, and we'll go display as box. Um, so we can still see it. So we scrub through this. It actually runs in real time now. So we'll play it. That's pretty cool. Okay. And that's effectively it. I mean, that's that's how I made that's that's basically how I made this scene. Very simple setup. And we even used it with a tie actor, so now we can now we can do whatever we want with those spheres. We could do whatever we want with the sticks. Maybe we'll do uh, some materials. Um, all I did for the for this video was I just uh, I just did a big gradient material on everything. Maybe we'll set up a quick material. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe we'll just do. Um, let me convert this to F-Storm real quick, just in case I do decide to render this. It's pretty cool. Um, convert the scene. All right, we'll get rid of that for now. Um, so we'll go ahead and create a multi-sub-object material. And maybe do like uh, three materials. And... Let's see, for the stick, maybe we'll do like a purple or something for now. Just kind of test things out. Um, copy, do a couple copies. Just want to see what these things start to look like. Blue. Mm, I like white. 
Okay, so in our Typhal object, we'll go ahead and do a material ID. And maybe just do random for right now. I just kind of want to see how this thing starts to look like. And then, okay. So you could tell it adds, uh, it randomizes the color of the sticks and the spheres, cylinders, I mean. Sticks in the balls. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. If we wanted to make um, the sticks a different color than the spheres, what we could do is uh, um, separate out these materials for now, instance them out. And just to show you guys that you can do this, um, the cylinder, apply that material, and then the ball, apply this blue material. Um, okay, we'll get rid of these. And then what we can do here is in our actor object from, turn this off for right now, in our actor object, yeah, see we already, instance material, you can inherit from actor nodes. So that way you can control what the spheres and what the balls look like in terms of the materials. Just, um, one last thing that we could do is um, to make this run a little faster and um, if you guys are done, if you guys are satisfied with the way that this is uh, this is simulating, what we could do is uh, export out of, um, the tie cache. So we'll do the whole 300 frames and then browse and save our we can browse and save our cache somewhere. So choose a file location, keep it as tie cache there, and then we'll go ahead and uh, generate a tie cache. Cool, and that goes pretty quick. Tie cache export complete. Click OK, and then we can turn off our uh, cached enabled. Tie flow sim, so we can get rid of that, and then this this is our new tie, our our tie flow object now. So you can see that it's working and it's nice and smooth. And everything's everything is looking good. So now we can render this out, and it should render pretty nicely. Okay, guys, that's it for this tutorial. Um, pretty quick and simple little physics simulation that we set up here. Um, if you guys have any questions or uh, suggestions for new tutorials or anything, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you guys like the tutorial, please give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. Continue making these if, uh, if you guys find them to be valuable. Um, yeah, and, uh, and also you can follow me on uh, Instagram, at Simulation Lab. Um, post all kinds of weird experiments and stuff that I'm working on. Um, yeah. Uh, Thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks.